Did you ever just want to burn all your enemies to the ground? Well, Games Workshop has some green space marines who can help you do just that. Hello and welcome back to Auspets Tactics, where today we're doing quite a lot of news. Not only are the Raven Guard and Iron Hands FAQs up, but the Salamanders chapter has also received its preview, and has confirmed the rumoured Tactical Doctrine enhancement to buff Melter and Flamer weapons. In this video we're just going to take a quick look at these new rules and talk about some of the potential implications on your playing with the Sons of Vulcan. So we already know that the base Salamanders, not the successor chapter, get one reroll to hit and one reroll to wound per unit in the shoot phase and the fight phase, and they ignore any AP modifiers of minus one, so any bolt rifle shooting them with AP minus one will be AP zero instead. We now know that their Enhanced Doctrine is called Promethean Cult, and it affects the Tactical Doctrine. It's very simple. In a pure Salamanders or Salamander Successors army, when they're in the Tactical Doctrine, when you're resolving a hit by a Melter or Flamer weapon, then you just add one to the wound roll made for that weapon. So this massively incentivizes you to use either Melter or Flamer weapons in a Salamander's army, which is very fluffy really, as the Salamanders just love to burn things. I mean, their chapter symbol looks very much like a dragon to me. To be honest, I think that this is weaker than the other two tactical doctrines that we've seen so far, the Ultramarines fire as if stationary, and the Raven Guard plus one to hit and wound against characters. The reason for that is that Melter and Flamer weapons aren't particularly commonly taken at the moment. If this was a buff that was already taken, highly taken weapons, such as say, the Iron Hands buffing all heavy weapons with reroll wands and move and shoot for no penalty, then I'd get behind this a lot more. Unfortunately, at the moment, Melter and Flamer weapons don't tend to be the strongest in a Space Marine's army, so this will be more of a case of this buff might start to make these weapons more viable. The Melter buff, however, in particular, synergizes amazingly with the Salamander's trait of re-rolling one hit roll and one wound roll per phase. Because Melter is such a high-strength weapon, it means that that re-roll of such a high-power shot adds so much value compared with, say, re-rolling some random bolter shot that you don't care about. I think those re-rolls combined with this Promethean Cult enhancement could really start to see us seeing more Melter on the tabletop. I think good delivery options are, say, having two tactical squads with a Melter Gun and Combi Melter in a drop pod. This means you get double the amount of re-rolls, and all of those Melters will be wounding on 3s or 2s versus virtually anything that's toughness 8 or below, and you also get to keep them safe until turn 2, when you can activate the Tactical Doctrine. Unfortunately, Primaris Marines don't in general have very much melter at the moment, so you're mainly going to be looking at the older star marines for that, things like drop podding stern guard veterans, or random multi-melters mounted on vehicles in various forms. In terms of flamers, the flamer buff will certainly help out things like flamestorm aggressors, flamer assault centurions, which I already really like, and provide solid buffs to less competitive units as well, such as the Land Raider Redeemer. One combo that I'm particularly interested in is filling a drop pod full of either company veterans or stern guard veterans and kissing them out with combi flamers. Now usually you wouldn't be able to fire the flamers because they're only 8 inch range, but if you take them as a successor chapter of the salamanders and give plus 3 inch range, you could drop in and have 10 d6 shots that all have plus 1 to wound with a flamer weapon, and it would also be AP minus 1 because you've been in the tactical doctrine. That could fry a lot of things but it can get even better. They've leaked one stratagem called Flamecraft for 2 CP, where you pick one unit in the shooting phase, and instead of having to roll the dice for how many flamer weapons you get with each model, you just get to pick 6, which I find is a great number to pick if you want to roll high on a 6-sided dice. So that drop podding stern guard squad with 10 combi flamers will be hitting 60 times at AP-1 with plus 1 to wound, on average dice, that's 41 dead guardsmen, if you can get them in range of that many. And we haven't even counted their bolter shots into that, that they can also fire off from the combi weapons. That's a combo to look out for, and we might even see more buffs for it in the Salamanders Codex. It feels very Salamandersy to drop in a whole bunch of fancy people with very nice mastercrafted weapons, and absolutely immolate the foe in a fiery blaze of glory. They've also rumoured a few other things. There's a fancy relic thunder hammer that is AP minus four and hits with a further three extra damage if you roll a wound roll of six. A psychic power called fire shield which has a warp charge of six and it basically makes one unit of salamanders within 18 inches minus one to hit and also minus one to charge. So that's a very nice pickup. If you wanted to be silly, then you could put it on something like a storm raven gunship to be a minus 
2 to hit for a turn, so that's very powerful indeed. And we also have a Warlord trait called Lord of Fire, which allows you to re-roll the number of shots for flamer weapons within 6 inches of the Warlord, because you won't want to be always paying those 2 CP for flamecraft, so this could make things a bit more burny without having to spend so many CP. We'll be taking a bit more of a close in-depth look at these when the full codex is released. I certainly look forward to doing a Salamanders review, so feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see that. They also talk about Mr. Adrax Agatone, one of the single fightiest Space Marine characters, and he's well less than 150 points. I can't quite remember exactly how much he is now, but I have already done a full video on this guy, as the internet has already got wind of his rules. Basically, on average dice, this guy can often solo an item one round of fighting. So if you're more interested in him, then feel free to go ahead and click the link on the end screen to my review of him. I think that just about wraps it up for this video. If I've missed anything, got anything wrong, or you'd just like to rave about how awesome the new Salamanders are looking, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.